Under the framework of structural realism, what challenges does the U.S. face in pivoting itself in order to retain its hegemony in light of the threat posed by China? What structural realism would have predicted, which is coming true, is that <clears throat> the number one power called primacy or hegemony uh, will want to preserve its exalted position and when a challenger arises, like China in this case, it will seek to balance and contain um, that power, which is exactly what the United States is doing, but in a very subtle way, because um, China and, and the United States are tied together by lots of dependencies. You know. mm -hmm. One needs the market, and the other one needs China to hold $800 billion worth of securities. So there's a lot of deterrence built into this, which is economic deterrence. But having said that, uh, it's a very subtle game, but it's a quite clear. I mean, the United States is gathering under its wings Japan, Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, uh, and offering itself as, as a kind of security lender and uh, informally harnessing those nations against China. What would you say are the main arguments or weaknesses against structural realism? Do you want me to destroy my own theory? Be my guest. Okay. <laughs> um, what, what, I've, what I've tried to outline in my talk, um, if you take one competing school, liberal institutionalism, you have to admit that you cannot explain the world that Europe is without the very powerful institutional uh, sinews that the EU has, has built and which strongly influence and contain the state behavior. Uh, that's one argument against structural realism. The other argument is what you call constructivism, which is that values and norms do play a role in foreign policy, certainly in our Western democratic world, not in Asia, not in Africa, not in the Middle East. But whenever we talk about international issues, we talk about it in terms of values. Lastly, Professor Jaffe, if American pacifism is not a permanent state of the world, can you envision in our lifetime a re-emergence of great power politics in Europe? Uh, it's a very good question. It's very hard for me to imagine that uh, <clears throat> because I don't know what say, France and Germany and Britain should fight about. Uh, we don't, we're no longer in the colonies game, we're no longer in the conquest game. Um, we uh, are no longer in the warrior game. I mean, we don't even have a warrior culture anymore. Uh, we don't have kings and potentates. So uh, even if the United States disappeared from this game as a pacifier, I think um, the system would hold. But I can't imagine the United States disappearing from, from the system. That's what a world power is all about, that it takes care of regional balances and ties them together globally.